Hello world, I'm Chris Perillo, and a few minutes ago I shared with you my initial impressions of the 10.5 inch iPad Pro. I'm about to share with you my comparison between the 10.5 inch iPad Pro and the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, or as I may likely refer to the two of these, the large one and the small one, <laughs> the big one and the not so big one, because uh, that's really the major difference between these two iPad Pros. Uh, I will also tell you that this video, like a lot of the videos uh, that I do, is going to be going to my patrons first. You can become a patron, head over to chrisperillo.com. Uh, I'm taking all of my experience inside the tech industry for the past 20 years and sharing my insights with patrons primarily. If you really want to hear my tech perspectives, that's where you can go now. So. You can become a patron. It's really easy to do. ChrisPerillo.com, that's pretty much where all of it goes. Uh, I'm also throwing you a bone, though. I'm putting this video out there because you may have wanted to know what I think about these two things. Um, so I, I wrote my notes down here on another computer, not to be confused with these computers here because these very much are computers. They're PCs, as far as I'm concerned. These are very personal, more personal than my first PC, by the way. Uh, so I'm not going to dive too deeply into specs for a few different reasons. One, this is the first 12.9-inch iPad Pro, the big one. Like the giant iPad Pro, this is the first one. So spec-wise, uh, it, it wouldn't be quite fair to compare it to the very brand new 10.5-inch iPad Pro, the small iPad Pro. Um, so, so this isn't about a battle of, of specs, necessarily. It's, it's more about my experience with smaller iPads and larger iPads. Uh, so the contemporary specifications, or the specs... Uh, with the hardware of the, the latest gen 12.9 inch iPad Pro uh, are pretty much similar minus uh, screen size discrepancy uh, with the uh, the 10.5 inch or the uh, the smaller iPad Pro. Um, so that really isn't to me what, what's interesting about the, this particular uh, comparison because the promise of a better iOS experience is ultimately what drove me to the big iPad and I mean, big is just not a big enough word. The gargantuan iPad? Yeah, I just watched Kill Bill Volume 2 again the other night. Uh, <laughs> I so very rarely have a chance to use that word in a sentence. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I got it, not because it was big. Not because of anything that it had in it, apart from potentially a, a better iOS experience in terms of general performance. What I learned is that I really don't think the, the big iPad Pro is for me. I'd say it's not for you. Um, I, I, but that's the reason why I went with the, the first iPad Pro, the 12.9-inch the iPad Pro, um, and I'm selling it. It's, it's actually kind of sold. I'm, I'm, I'm basically selling it to a friend at a, a fraction of, of its uh, market value at this point. The big difference between the two, and really, we're not just talking screen size. We're talking actual device size. Is size. That, that, that says it all. Yeah, you've got some bezel discrepancies in terms of, of measurement. They, they, they try to eke out as much uh, actual usable screen in uh, the iPad Pro 10.5 inch. I almost said 1.5 inch. That would be a very small uh, tablet. And, uh, you know, they, they, so that, that is a difference. But it's really about the usability of these two devices. And I think that's where the starkest contrast is. Not in the measurement of the screen, just the actual usability between these two is just, it's its different. Uh, and I, I hope to be able to better explain that here as I, I, I go back to my notes. Um, the smaller one, yes, it is more affordable, right? You're paying for less physical hardware. Um, and, and I don't think that's what makes it better for me necessarily, although that you know, definitely sweetens the deal. Uh, but it, it is something to to absolutely note. There, there is definitely a, a price. And I don't think that... Um, the bigger screen, I, I don't think I could justify a bigger price for the bigger screen iPad. And I love high resolution, man. I was pushing way back in the day, we we're talking CRT monitor days, like 1600 by 1200, because I needed more resolution back in the day. Uh, I don't think it plays well with the iPad or, or specifically with iOS. Um, so, yeah, affordability. This, the large one, uh, I will tell you, in my experience over the past year or so, however long I've had it, I, I couldn't even tell you, um, 
it's very unwieldy to hold. It's not that it's heavy. It's like, oh my god, our character has... Yeah, it is heavy. I mean, no doubt. Like, if you're planning on using this for, like, all of your AR experiences, which, let's face it... Oh, man. Dang it. Ah. Uh, gotta get the notes up again. I, I don't want to stay disorganized if I can at all help it. There we go. I need to, like, kick in a, a something that'll keep the screen from sleeping. Um, it's very unwieldy. And I'm talking about AR experiences, like, you know, what we're going to see in iOS 11. These two do not have iOS 11 on them as it's currently in beta. Um, it, certainly, right. You know, it's you could use it. It's a big screen, right? But it's just, it's unwieldy. I mean, certainly in, in portrait or landscape mode, it's just, it doesn't feel as natural or as comfortable as uh, the smaller iPad does, the smaller iPad Pro uh, specifically. Um, it's lighter. Obviously, you're talking about less materials. Uh, there are fewer materials, certainly. It's a smaller device. It just feels right. Uh, the iPad Pro 10.5-inch display feels right. It feels better when holding on to it. it. It feels better. It doesn't necessarily look better. Like It just feels better. I mean, they look the same. One just happens to have uh, you know, a, a bigger resolution. Same PPI, though. Um, pixels per inch. So the density of pixels is, is the same between the two. The uh, uh, the large one, as I discovered, is not the end-all be-all. It is not the ultimate. Um, it's really best suited for those people who want to do multitasking. Yeah, I, I think it's not as portable as a smaller iPad Pro, because of the, certainly it's gigantic, gargantuan. Uh, the... Uh, 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 the fact is that it's just better suited for running more than one thing at a time, which iOS is now, you know, kind of built for. In fact, we haven't seen iOS 11 in its final incarnation as of uh, this particular time, but I expect that to take even more advantage of a larger screen. If you are into the idea of having multiple apps running at the same time, I never was. I I'm... St I'm still not. I, I never had an issue just paying attention to one thing at a time. You know, there's so many people out there who's got, I have 30,000 things, i got to have this open at the tab open, then you're not paying attention to the thing you need to pay attention to. I'd be shocked if I wasn't in a PIP window somewhere and you've ignored me and you've already walked out. Um, you pay attention to the one thing you need. And there are times that I think it's useful to, to, to have more than one app on the screen, and if that's the case, that you, that's where you, you, you fit, the larger screen variety, I think, is going to suit you better. It does, absolutely does not uh, with me. Um, great for multitasking, the larger screen is, uh, and for sharing a screen. If you're, you know, sitting there and watching a movie, you know, between two people, certainly, you know, you want, you know, a larger screen to do that. But in terms of personal use, in terms of, you know, multitasking, but not light, not even light multitasking. You can multitasking just as easily on the smaller iPad Pro as you can on the bigger one. It's just that it's designed to have more things uh, all at once. And what makes that painfully obvious is that iOS is largely optimized for, uh, uh, at least as far as the iPad's concerned, smaller resolutions. So it, 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 there's so much white space in like Apple's default apps, uh, on the uh, specifically on the the larger screened iPad, it's it's just painful. Like it, the app was just not optimized for this screen size. Uh, that bothered me a great deal. I, I'll be honest, it really bothered me. There was just too much white space. I wanted to go back to a smaller screened iPad so badly, but I didn't want to make a lateral move, and it wasn't until uh, the release of, of this particular iPad. You can watch my uh, initial impressions video for, for more information on that. Um, but I feel that the smaller iPad Pro uh, displays single-task single, uh, single task apps better. There's not as much um, white space at play, uh, specifically with apps that still run on iOS but have not yet been optimized for uh, to, to specifically be independent, uh, resolution independent. So uh, have you ever seen an upscaled app on uh, you know a high-resolution screen? It looks horrific, like gag-inducing horrific. Like text is blurry, images aren't crisp, uh, it's, it's just nasty. And uh, many of the apps that I, I've used, not default apps, uh, third-party apps that I, I find to be kind of critical to my iPad experience, just weren't optimized. And I, there's no telling if they ever will be. So I'm like, this this sucks. Um, even though the iPad Pro 10.5-inch does have a slightly higher resolution compared to the classic 9.7-inch iPad, it uh, 
it, the, the upscaling isn't as no noticeable. Slightly, but you'd really have to like, you know, I'm not as, 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 as others might be. It's not as much of an issue. It's, it's not as pronounced. Uh, that is probably one of the bigger factors that would drive me away from ever adopting something much larger uh, than what they are providing currently with the, uh, the smaller iPad Pro, the 10.5-inch uh, iPad Pro, which I believe that moving forward is probably going to be like the baseline uh, as far as an iPad uh, measurement is uh, concerned. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it, it, it comes, to me, it comes down to usability, uh, it comes down to, you know, actual experience, uh, you, know, uh, you know, layout issues with apps, uh, just, just having a decent, optimal uh, iPad experience in between the two. It's night and day, as far as I'm concerned. It's night and day between uh, the, the smaller screen iPad and the big one. I'm, I'm done with the big one. Like, no, it's not for me. Uh, but again, that's that's not my use case. It's it's at this point in time, it's not. I, I need something that just feels right, and this one absolutely in every possible way because iOS is just not. They're writing that that they're they're on the cusp, right, of allowing you to do more than one thing at a time and not. Uh, it's a weird kind of trade off, and I, I find the sweet spot is specifically with the smaller iPad. Um, I'll tell you, I missed over the past however long I've had this Pro, I've missed the smaller one, like, dr like dramatically. Like, there'd be times I'd just look at the screen and everything just looks so spread out, and, like, it just it just doesn't feel optimized at all. And even iOS 11 doesn't even, for, for, for all intents and purposes, look as optim optimized on the larger screen as it does on the smaller one. So I, I, missed, I missed this one. That was probably just as much of a deciding factor for me to ultimately sell the big iPad Pro as the promotion was on the new iPad Pro, uh, which was, like, to me, the number one feature in terms of, uh, you know, what it finally provided with iOS that we used to have back in the day. I don't want to get into it. You can watch the other videos if you want more information, the, the ones that I'm, I'm, I'm putting out there for free. Um, that's pretty much all I had in terms of, of notes, in terms of uh, comparisons. You know, it's just talking through, you know, my, my absolute experience. And I'm sure you've seen both. I'm sure you've held both. I'm, I'm sure you've watched a thousand videos between the two. But ultimately, that's kind of what it came down to is, what did I experience? What am I happier with? Um, you know, use cases certainly for either one of these, but I... Not really sad to see that thing go. Very rarely am I sad to see any any bit of hardware go because it was designed to be replaced. That's 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 how it is. These things are not uh, not really collectible. Uh, don't fault them for that. They're tools. They're just fancy screwdrivers with touch screens. Uh, okay, everybody, I'm going to move on. Do another video for my patrons, and you can join me there at chrisperillo.com. We'll see you later.